Hello, I'm Rich Madalino. I am the Chief Administrative Officer for the Montgomery County Government. Today, I'm joined by two outstanding leaders in the county government, Commander Amy Dom, who is the commander of the Bethesda District for the Montgomery County Police Department, and Chief D. Richards, who is the Division Chief for Human Resources with the Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Service. Um, both uh, Commander Dom and Chief Richards are um, amongst the senior commanders within their two services, and I, f and I think, in fact, are the senior most um, women in both, in both departments. Um, Chief Richards has been with the um, County Fire Department since 1989. Uh, Commander Dom has been with the Police Department since 2003. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what brought them to the Montgomery County government, what brought them into public safety careers, and how other young women um, might be interested in how they might get involved with both our police department and our fire department. So I'll start with you, um, Chief Richards. So um, in learning a little bit more about you, I realized that you filled out your application to become a firefighter, even though you didn't even know if you wanted to be I a firefighter. I had no <laughs> idea. That is the truth. And so for those of, you know, for the folks who don't remember, I filled out my application like on a piece of paper with a pen or a pencil, uh, whichever one was available. And as I was filling it out, you know, I had heard about this opportunity. Uh, to be involved in public safety. Wasn't really sure if I wanted to do it, but was told that it was a great opportunity and a great career. So it's true that as I was filling out my application, I still wasn't 100% sure that this was definitively what I wanted to do. And the interesting thing is in 1989, you would have been just 10 years beyond the very first woman to be a firefighter. In yeah, and that's funny. And I didn't, I, I didn't even consider that. Uh, what I considered was that I wanted to help my community I had a sense of team already because I was uh, grew up playing sports, uh, and so I had a sense of team. And the people who encouraged me to fill out the application kind of said that was all I needed. I had a little bit of concern with the firefighting portion when I was first hired, but again, the people who encouraged me said, "Look, we'll train you how to do that." And uh, so from there, uh, you know, some some really great people took me under their wing. And one of the things I, you know, I probably should add is it wasn't necessarily people who looked like me because people who came from my community uh, were not traditional firefighters. Mm -hmm. So some people who believed in me took me under their wing and gave me an opportunity to be a firefighter and, and start on this amazing career. So, and um, Commander Dom, um, women started with the Montgomery County Police Department a little bit earlier than the fire department, but only writing parking tickets. And it was years later that we had the first female um, sworn officer. Uh, we've already actually had a female police chief um, in Montgomery County um, in the late 90s, I think into the early 2000s. One, yes. yep. um, what drew you into law enforcement? A little bit about your background. It said that you, you decided to fill out the application your junior year of college is when you thought and um, got involved in law enforcement. So a little bit like D, right? When, when we talk about cops, a lot of people say, oh, I've always known I wanted to be a cop. I've always known. I didn't either, right? And I didn't even think of it as an option mm -hmm. until after doing a ride along. I went to American University um, my junior year. I, I was really involved in politics and mm -hmm. thought that I was going to go into politics. Mm -hmm. I was a political science major with a minor in communication. And everything that I was doing from working at think tanks to interning on Capitol Hill was really geared that way. And the more time I spent doing it, the more I realized that wasn't what I wanted. And then I was kind of in this quandary, right? What do I do? Because my entire life has been prepared towards going in that direction. Junior year in college, I was taking a justice law and society class at American University, my undergrad alma mater, and went on a ride along. And that was the moment that I recognized that policing isn't what we portray it in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not a police chase every day. There's not these, you know, ongoing battles. That's not what policing is. Policing for them, and, and those things do happen, and I don't want to discount that they do, but the majority of my days are spent talking to people, mediating with people, creating relationships, building bridges. That's actually what policing was. And I had that in the back of my mind when 9-11 happened. In 9-11, I was an intern down just outside of Union Station at a think tank. And I remember they, they let us all go. 
And the people that you saw outside of metro stations, the people that you saw outside of these buildings, they were cops. And they were there to help. And you know, we, we talk a lot about look for those helpers and something just clicked inside of me and I recognize that's the way that I can help my community at this more, that this more micro local level and really be able to affect change and impact people. That's why I got into policing. But I think that had those two things never happened, I never rec would have recognized that for someone like me, policing could be a viable option. So um, both of you are um, amongst uh, a minority within the, the fire department and police department. The fire department of more than 1,200 um, firefighters only has 77 women. Sure. The police department of more than 1,100 sworn officers, there are about 280 female officers. Um, but in the command ranks, you're even more uh, rare. Um, tell me a little bit about your journey to the, the command ranks. You want to start? Yeah, I you will. start. So for me, it just seemed like the next logical step. Mm -hmm. uh, and while you recognize, uh, you know, as a firefighter, that you may be the only woman in the station or the only woman of among five or six stations, I think the thing for women uh, when I came in, you just kind of had to learn how to be mm -hmm. um, and learn how to carry yourself and try to find that balance. You're not one of the guys but you are among the guys and you mm -hmm. had to kind of learn and adjust. I think that's the hardest thing for women yes. in public safety is learn how to just be. Be comfortable with who you are. Be comfortable with where you are. Be comfortable with the decisions you make. Be comfortable with being in charge. And so kind of just learn how to be. And some of that starts, you know, kind of early in your journey. Um, so just kind of learning how to be, learning how to be among the guys, learning how to uh, not diminish my standards uh, and not let myself uh, be diminished by anybody else. So it just became the next logical step. And after I figured out how to be, the rest seemed to come easier, mm -hmm. just with basic communication, understanding my role. I think a pivotal point for me was when I became a captain, uh, which um, was riding the seat of the fire engine, being in charge of a station, gaining that confidence. And it was kind of at that point where I said, you know what, I can do this. I had a lot more confidence. Um, it took me some time to realize that the way you fight fires, the way you interact with people, I thought it was all the gospel, what, what I had been taught. I thought it was the gospel and didn't understand that they were ideas, they were philosophy, that was somebody else's opinion. But I, too, could kind of establish my own framework if I knew the basics of how to go about doing something, some, some of the things, some of the tactical things, interacting with people, running a station. So I modeled after a bunch of people who I thought were really phenomenal, took lessons from people who I thought weren't so good, was able to kind of frame myself up with the classes I had taken, with the knowledge I had in my head. And that propelled me forward. And after I got comfortable, with, again, knowing how to be, uh, then it's just seemed promotions, studying for exams just seemed like the next logical step for me. I agree, and for me it was sergeant, right? And I, I had, and I think we all do, I think we all feel that trepidation as you're taking on new responsibility, and I think that that's important to have that too, because you recognize that there's a responsibility that goes with those promotions. For me, when I, I was promoted and I'll be honest with you, like I, I walked into the test, I didn't really study, right? I was able to get past that, that first um, piece, which for us is a multiple choice test for sergeant. And then you walk into the oral board and you walk into all these things and I thought to myself, Man, maybe I can do this, Yes. right? Yeah. And I remember actually getting promoted and sitting down with then Assistant Chief Daryl McSwain, who had been one of my mentors when I was a younger officer. And he, him, just sitting there and listening to him, like he's like, you absolutely can do this. You are ready for this and it's going to be okay. Right. And I think that especially as women, we're really vulnerable to that idea of imposter syndrome where we are taking on these, these steps and we understand that we're competent, we understand that we're ready, but then that, that moment of vulnerability where it's like, oh, but am I? Am I, sure. Right, and to just, and I think it's hard for women to overcome that, which I think is one of the reasons why we so, see so few women 
of rank in our organizations that are extraordinarily male dominated. But I think that it's important for women to understand you absolutely can do it. It's about learning how to own the things that you are yes. going to do differently in the space that you are asked to occupy and demand that space right. is very, very important in these male dominated organizations. So, and then you, you start to grow. For me, when I was promoted to lieutenant, I had an amazing male mentor in Mark Klasinski who basically told me, um, you're gonna be a captain. There's, there, we're gonna take the next couple of years and we're gonna prepare you for that. And that's really important too. I think that you, you think it's important to develop the women underneath you, the men underneath you, to be ready to take on new responsibilities within the organization. But it's important to have those voices saying you absolutely can, can do, this. do this, you absolutely are ready for this. And then those, those couple months and those new assignments, right, where you're just trying to figure out and you just have to know and be ready and just say, I've got this. I've got this, I can do this. And I think we both have felt this, we've talked about this a little bit before, because there are so few women, there's also a very heavy mantle of responsibility for both yeah. of us to, to represent women in positions of, of rank, in, in authority, both internally within the organization and externally to the community, is a very heavy burden. But I think that it's one that we've, we've both talked about, we've both taken on, but we're also both aware and cognizant of yeah. as we step into new spaces. And I think we've, you know, we've also, in public safety, we tend quietly to rely on each other. Um, we're sisters in public safety. So sitting here with Amy, this is not my first time meeting her. She and I have kind of climbed the ranks together. And uh, particularly with fire and police, we occupy the same space often at the same time, meaning that if there's a bad accident, if there's something happening at a hospital, if there's a huge event, we're at the same place at the same time. So I think, you know, we may say, whisper to each other, well, how are you, how are you? Um, our, while our promotional exams are not the exact same, they kind of mirror the same framework. So we can talk to each other a lot of times the dimensions, the measurements, how you are, are um, uh, you know, how you present are the same. So we talk to each other about those kind of things. Uh, and I, I agree with you 100%. There are a couple of roles we're playing here and I think uh, that's one of the things that's rarely talked about in public safety. So yes, we are police officers, we are police executives, we're firefighters, we're fire uh, officer executives. But there's the other burden of being a wife, there's the burden of being a mother, and I think that a lot of times we're trying to fit into this societal role of what either a mother is supposed to be, or what a wife is supposed to be, or whatever other kind of framework people try to put us in and so we feel some of that responsibility when it comes to raising our kids when we don't make you know the traditional birthdays holiday dinners um, and then our partners our spouses um, in our cases our husbands are there but we are not you're judged so we have to kind of quietly learn how to manage that um, very similar to public safety partners in corrections and in the sheriff's department. So I think that although there are not necessarily a lot of women in fire rescue, policing wise, we often talk to each other, find out, hey, how did you do this? How did you manage this? And while not the exact same, they're Pretty very, close. very similar, Pretty very close. close, yeah. So I, I would imagine from my perspective for your children, it, it must be so cool <laughs> to have yeah. a mom as a police officer, a mom who's a firefighter, um, amongst them, amongst their friends, do you find that to be the case, or is it? No. Okay. No. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, I work really hard um, for my son. I just work hard to just be his mom. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. I don't necessarily want to do anything that draws away from who he is and his identity. So I will even like um, if I have to pick him up from something. It's not not a hundred percent, but like I'll go and change cars. I'll change cars, I'll change uniforms, because a lot of times, particularly in our professions, uh, where we're assigned vehicles, um, people, oh, the police are here, or oh, the firefighters are here, or what's happening, what's going on? And again, those stereotypical roles, people forget that we're just moms right. who are supporting our kids. 
so in 2024, are you surprised at um, how few women are part of your departments? How many women are part of your departments? Where, wh what surprises you about where we are right now? For me, I think, first, Montgomery County police are above the national average when we talk about women who are on the department, right? We're doing pretty well. We're part of the 30 by 30 initiatives. We want to see 30% of our police recruit classes be women by the year 2030, which I think is a great and attainable goal. Mm -hmm. What surprises me is when we talk about promotions, because we have a lot of women in positions who are choosing not to take that next step. And they're, they're choosing not to for a lot of different reasons, very, very valid reasons, right? Whether it's I'm raising a family and I'm busy with that and I, I can't figure out how to juggle these responsibilities. Um, it, there, there's just a variety of reasons. Uh, even going back to, to cultural ideas, quite frankly, yeah. Yeah. about women in leadership positions in male-dominated organizations. And I think one of my goals is certainly to show women that this is something that is possible, it is attainable, and is very important for our organization as we move forward to have a female perspective in positions of responsibility. Yeah, I, I agree 100% and really, I don't know that I can add much more. Um, am I surprised? No, I don't feel surprised uh, because at times when you're on shift work or working long hours or you're at an event um, and you have to leave early or come late, some people just not can't figure out how to kind of yeah, navigate how that, how to make it work. Um, so I'm not surprised, but, um, and unfortunately we don't have that type of initiative, but I think that's a good goal. That's a good way to achieve, and I think it's, it's mostly through communication. How, you know, we need to be out front, and we need to be accessible, and give people the opportunity to talk to us and say, hey, how did you make it? I think a lot of, another thing that helps us, again, in public safety, is that here in the D.C. metropolitan area, we really have some great examples. Uh, we lean on each other a lot. So, uh, you know, women in uh, uh, fire rescue, women in policing, we lean on each other a lot from our neighboring jurisdictions to help find that support ideas. And we really, I think, are really quite fortunate in the D.C. metropolitan area to have uh, government officials such as yourself who are kind of lean forward forward thinking, who make it okay um, to, to, to be a woman, to make it okay to raise your family. We're not questioned or there's no real, I've never felt there was really a lack of understanding. I know um, when I was pregnant with my son, um, I thought it was very important that I have an opportunity to wear a uniform what I'm wearing, like I'm wearing now, but had my shirt, instead of being the fitted shirt, was a maternity shirt. I thought that was important and I was supported uh, in, in that belief. So I, I think those types of things are important. I agree. So um, one of the interesting things about our fire department is it is a combination of both career and volunteers. Are there more young women involved in the volunteers that then don't pursue the career option? So the, the number of women uh, that volunteer uh, amazingly is higher than the number of women that seek careers. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that I know the answer to why. Um, it could be because these women choose to stay within their community and serve at their community level. Uh, oftentimes they have other professions, other careers, and that is just their way of giving back in addition to uh, whatever service, professional service that they're providing. But um, we do, we have so many amazing volunteers, um, women who stand up to, to the role um, in Montgomery County, and again, professional women, people who are, and I, you know what, I shouldn't say professional. I should say career, who made mm -hmm. the career choice to be a fire, because they're all professionals, yeah. right? Yep. So, but there are some amazing women on both sides of the, um, on both sides, volunteer and career side. So um, I noticed in the, the numbers for the current police academy, while the total number of cadets enrolled is not where we would want it to be, interestingly, only a third are white men. Um, so the police department is succeeding in, in a more diverse um, group, but um, how do we get more young women interested in going to the police academy? What, 
are, are we missing something um, in your opinion as to how we recruit that would get us more um, young women in the academy? It's a complicated answer, Rich. Yes, I know. And, and it involves, it, it goes beyond just the police department. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to where we are as a society, as a culture, and when we talk about gender roles, traditional gender roles, our beliefs surrounding gender and normative gender behavior. Because when we talk about a woman who chooses firefighting or policing, these are not normal, common career aspirations, mm -hmm. professional ideas, professional identities for a woman to take on. So she's already exhibiting that she is kind of willing to break that mold. What we need to do to get more women to do that is to talk more about what policing, what firefighting, what public safety actually is every day in our communities. Because again, I, I think that there's a romantic, this romantic idea of what a day looks like. And that's not really what a day looks like. It's not really the expectation, especially in our community, of what a police officer or firefighter looks like. And the more we talk about the roles that women can play in our societies, in our communities, what that looks like, and the idea that you can do this too is very, very important. It's not what you may believe it is. It's not the stereotypical idea of what a cop or a firefighter looks like. Because I don't think that either one of us fill that, fill fill that, that. norm and at all. people want to make it physical, right? Yes. People want to make it about... Which it can be. Right. It can be. It can be. We don't want to leave. But it's not what we do every, every day. day. So I think the question we often get is uh, like the physical challenge asking me, well, you know, did you ever go into a burning building? <laughs> or did you ever have, asking Amy, did, right. do you have to fight? Those are the images, those are the mm -hmm. stereotypes of what people uh, believe that we're confronted with every day. And while we, that's not our choice, we, we are qualified. We have passed all the competencies that get us to that level. We've done everything that we needed to do to be where we are now. Um, so I, I agree with you. Get away from the physical idea in your mind of what you think a firefighter or what a police officer should look like. Um, generally, if somebody is in trouble, they want uh, somebody who is 6'4", 230, you know, that is some type of you know, athletic build to come get them, right? And when they see us, they assume, well, like, where's, you can't do this. Who, who, who's in charge? Mm -hmm. Or, or where, where are the people that can help me? So. Absolutely. And, you know, when I graduated the police academy, uh, listen, on a good day, I'm five foot. Okay. It was a few years ago, so maybe I'm not there anymore. But I also <laughs> weighed 88 pounds, right? I was tiny and out there doing this job. And if I can do it, women can definitely do this. Right? But it is a matter of getting over that idea, that stereotype that we all hold individually about what that's going to look like. What does help look like? And the answer is help comes in all different shapes and sizes and colors and, and everything. It doesn't matter. What matters is can you do the things that we've asked you to do? And I'm not going to say that I've never been involved in a fight because I have or a car chase, I've done that too, right? All of these Hollywood ideas, yeah, we've been there, done that. I'm sure Dee's been run right. into burning buildings right. and you know, drag people out of burning cars. That, those are things we do. But it's not every day, it's not every call. It's something else entirely than the things that people hold in their heads about what the job is. So uh, the county executive just released his FY25 recommended budget. Um, and it includes a very interesting initiative for the fire department. Sure. I was wondering if you yeah, could Yes, our girls' fire camp, and we are, we are excited. Um, so unfortunately, we're not the first people to uh, uh, run a fire, a girls' fire experience. Uh, there are several other places in the country where it's done, but we're looking forward uh, this summer to an opportunity to, in, to introduce young women to the idea of fire and rescue. And so, you know, from I'd say teenage, uh, maybe in the 15 year old to maybe the 21 year old range, people who may consider this as an opportunity for employment and to expose them to the academy, to expose them to a day in the life, to expose them to ideas, maybe help answer some of those questions break some of those myths, uh, and give them an opportunity to do some hands-on and have some hands-on experience. 
I'm so excited to hear about this. Thank you. We're all excited. I mean, on the rollout, that was one of the most um, popular um, items during during all of the various press conferences and um, announcements. So yeah, and it's um, going to be very a, exciting. It's going to be a week long experience, and uh, it's run by uh, one of our amazing females, Captain Ashley Robinson, who is overseeing the process. And I think it's it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. So um, both the fire department and the police department have. I think what are called cadet programs, yes. um, which is an opportunity for someone to get involved before they've necessarily signed on the on the bottom line. I think for the fire department, it's uh, for people in high school yes. in the cadet program. I think for the police department, it's slightly older. It's a little older. That's post high school. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about those programs. Yeah. So our cadet program is a great way to get involved uh, with the police department. It's for young people who are just leaving, transitioning out of high school, they're probably going to, into a community college program or the other, any other kind of program, first two years in college, and we're trying to expand that a little bit longer. There's a little bit of pay attached with it, but it's a way to get involved in the police department. They're assigned to different areas, different areas of expertise, whether that's with our special victims investigations division, it could be at a local station where they're picking up the phone calls and just learning what are my opportunities like? What does law enforcement actually look like on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, and our cadet program is, is um, taking on high school students that are a little bit younger, giving them an opportunity, exposing them to our emergency medical services side and our firefighting side to give them an opportunity um, and exposure to what it would be like. One of the things I say about the fire service is that I think people forget, and I think sometimes parents don't encourage. Uh, firefighting, I think the perception is it's a very blue collar position. I don't know that people consider firefighting as a profession. Um, so it's seen as a thing, as a hobby, um, something you kind of do on the side. But I think what people fail to overlook is that currently in Montgomery County, we have a very educated workforce. So you can you know, go to college, you can get your master's degree, you can get your law degree. We have people that fit all of those models. And so I think parents, you know, as they're helping their kids make decisions about what they want to do, uh, should consider us. Uh, we make great money and we are an educated workforce. And I think parents sometimes are concerned that if you choose firefighting, you're gonna get pigeonholed kind of into this blue collar profession where no real promotional opportunities. And then the question is, you know, will you be able to live uh, in the air comfortably, right, in the area that you serve? So um, what would you say to a young person, maybe just a young woman, um, who's thinking about this work? Come check us out. Yeah. We'd love to have conversations, right? I think that we, we both have these conversations almost every day with young women and young men in mm -hmm. the community who are considering what does law enforcement look like? For us, it's come take a ride along. See what it's actually like. Experience what it's like to be a police officer. And let's talk about the hard let's stuff. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the hard stuff. Tell me what your fears are. Yeah. Tell me if I tell you why, you tell me why not. And let's talk that through. Like, what does that look like? Um, I think the why not, people already kind of know why they want to do yeah. something, but let's talk about the why not. Let's talk about the hard stuff first. What's stopping you? What's stopping you, right. And if they wanted to have those conversations, if they wanted to do a ride along, if they wanted to um, talk to a firefighter about what it's like, how would they go about doing that? What would you recommend them First um, place do? to start is on our website. Mm -hmm. We have a great how do I section that covers a lot of these things, but I mean, email me, 2dcommander at montgomerycountymd.gov. I am happy to answer any questions. Any of my cops, I mean, I go out on foot patrol in Bethesda a whole lot. People come up and ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions because we want to help you understand. You can that. even follow Commander Dom on at, a variety of social media at platforms. At 2dcommander on Twitter or X or whatever we call it today, yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, our website is a great place to start if you are interested in a career recruiting. Um, Captain Jay Blake runs our recruiting department. We have a full academy staff that uh, will help also with the cadet program. Uh, we are tightly uh, um, working with Montgomery County Public Schools. So we have some great resources out there if people are interested. 
And Rich, I want to mention too, because it's, it's timely. We're doing a meet and greet at the Academy. I think it's on Sunday the 24th, if 24th Sunday. But uh, again, uh, of March. March, it's March, yep. But we do them every couple of months. And it's a great way to get in with our recruiters, ask questions of Academy staff, What's the Academy really like? So if you check us out on social media at MCP News, a lot of that information is on there. And again, those are, those are every couple months and it's a great opportunity to ask questions. And if people want to fo follow the fire department, Pete Perringer Pete is, everywhere. is half everywhere. of social media, I think <laughs> right? globally. He puts right. out an enormous amount of content that explains the fantastic work that the sure. Montgomery County Fire and Rescue yeah, Service does. He's fantastic. So, um, I want to thank the two of you for joining us today and for the commitment that you've made to the Montgomery County government, to our community, the community you call home. Um, it's an honor to serve with you. Um, so I hope you know how much um, the county government, County Executive Mark Elrich, appreciates the leadership that you provide within the county government, not just your departments, but across the board in county government each and every day. And uh, how much of a pleasure it is to um, get to support you in the important work that you do for the people of our community. Well, thanks, thanks so much, much for you. having yeah. us and uh, for taking the time um, to, to recognize us. Yes, right. thank you. Um, if you are interested in the website, um, you can get to both departments through the county website, which is MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. Thank you very much for joining us and have a great week.